thing I do is I remember we're talking about planning for learning and I teach for learning. So the three things are that there have to be outcomes for the session, really clear outcomes. They have to relate to the overall course stuff. And then you have to think about what and how both the student and the teacher prepare for the session. Students have to prepare. They have to have something they're going to do that they've done ahead of time. And then I think about what and how the teacher and the student will interact when they're in the class session. And part of this comes from working with Carl Smith for years, whose mantra is, we don't cover materials, we work with our students to uncover them. Working with the idea of uncovering, you give up the idea that you can ever cover content ever again. No way can we do that. Um, I think, again, it's back to how do you enact learning, and how are you going to expect excellence? So if you do those things um, to make them stimulating, you have to have students do work. They need to come in and have something done. First 10 minutes of a class in general, the whole course, they have to do work. Same thing in a class session. Um, so they have to do something before they come. They have to use it. When people say my students don't do their homework, I always say back, but do you have them use it in class? Do they go somewhere else with their learning? because of the homework they started out with, what you do in class and what they do in class. Do they get to a new place of learning? That makes it stimulating. And then have them record the new learning. Have them write themselves a note. Have them say it out loud. Have them write it in their homework. But if you want something stimulating, you have to let people know that they're learning. If you don't plan for learning, it's not going to happen. I think that's the bottom line. And part of it is if we think of how adults learn, um, Stephen Brookfield says we learn dialectically. So you have to plan for people to go back and forth. We learn through practical logic. So people have to test what they already know. Um, you've got to plan for that. Testing what you know doesn't already or accidentally happen. Um, Stephen Brookfield's third thing is we need to know how we know what we know and what we know and what we don't know. So again, you have to plan for that. What do students already know? What do I know? How am I going to show them how learning happens in my field? How am I going to be the meta person for what learning is? And you have to reflect on that. So if you're not planning, you can't plan in reflection because you won't be planning for how people are going to grow. Um, you plan for learning because you want to provoke significant change. That's Frank Cofield's bottom line. It's not just to acquire things. That's just going out and collecting some information. Learning is where you're changed by what you find out and how you interact with other people. And the research shows that over and over again. It's that social dimension that can happen face-to-face, -face, online, um, in any other kinds of ways. But it's got to be about change. See you guys. So my question back to you all is something like this. How can you learn what your students' goals are and use that as you plan forward in your own teaching? And this is an important thing for me because of the four teachers I had across my years from first grade through the end of college. There were four people who said, what is it you want to learn? And they would listen to us, they would sit in our groups, they would gather the information in writing. And what we would see throughout the class sessions that followed is a link to a resource, a comment um, about something we are interested in, an exercise developed around some common interests of the students, um, maybe an example or a demonstration based on that. So what they did was ask us what we wanted to learn and then they planned for our learning alongside what they planned they thought we needed to learn. They adjusted and calibrated. So my question is how can you do that? How can you gather what your students want to learn? What their own goals are besides credentialing? Or because of credentialing, what is it that that credential matters? Why is it that it matters to them? And how do you use that in your teaching and your planning going forward?